Okay, let's do a more circle for this element here, and we'll put a tensile stress of say 80 megapascals this way, and we'll do a compressive stress in the y direction of 40 megapascals, and we'll put a shear on going this way, and we'll make that 30 megapascals. So first thing is we'll give this a set of axes. So in here we'll make a set of axes x horizontal and y vertical. So to draw a more circle, first thing we need is our axes. So we'll make a set of axes on our page. Let's shift this a little bit. And we'll put a horizontal axis. through here and we'll make a vertical axis probably for this circle about here. This is my normal stress and this one up here is my shear stress. So the first one is our X point. X point are these two. This tensile stress and this shear stress both act on that surface. So we call these ones the X values. So this stress here is my tensile stress X, and this is my shear X, because stress acts in the X direction, and this shear acts on the same surface. That's why we give both of those the same number. Okay, X point has coordinates of um, positive 80, and my shear will be down here, it's trying to turn my element clockwise, so that arrow is trying to turn my element clockwise, therefore this is a positive 30 shear, so that's the coordinates for that point, so it's tensile and shear. So on my graph, come along here to 80, and positive shear, so we go up 30 and label that point X. Very important that you label that point there. And my Y stress will be these ones up here. So my Y one will have a tensile of, or compressive in this case, minus 40 and a shear of minus 30. So those are my two points. So we go tensile compressive is minus 40 and there and minus 30. And that's my Y point. Okay, join the two together. Put you close. And center the circle there is at 20, which is all very cool. Now we put a circle and that's my more circle. Okay, first thing we now want to find is our principal stress. Principal stress occur here. It's my maximum tensile stress since I'm measuring tensile across this way. This point, we can measure that off, will be at 87. And my minimum stress will be at this side, at this point over here, and that is at minus 47. Yep negative 47 okay and the last thing I, other thing I need to know will be the angle of my stress so put on here now with this one we measure from X it's very important that you pick up that it's from X so this is 10 26 degrees so that angle in there is 26 degrees now on doing the angles we, 26 degrees in here, good thing to do is this is from X 
going clockwise. So when I come to draw my principal element, if I start with an x-axis, again it's horizontal, that's my x, so now I measure from x clockwise 26 degrees, but I need to halve it when I get on to my element down here. So from here I will rotate that same direction, so clockwise, so this again is from x clockwise 26 over 2, 13 degrees. So I'm not going to scale that, but that's 13 degrees. So we go from x around clockwise, we get to the 87. So from x around clockwise, 87 is along that line there. So first thing is to put that in, positive 87. Tensile, 87 megapascals. Draw the rest of my element. Note that this point here is 87,0. Stress, shear stress. Normal stress, shear stress. This thing here has no shear. Right? It is the principal element, therefore it has no shear. Okay, points on the circle. These points up here, my X and my Y, were 180 degrees apart on my circle. Therefore my principal element will be given by these two points. My principal element will have maximum principal stress and minimum principal stress on it. Maximum is there, minimum will be at other axis. So this one through here will be minus 47. Okay. The next one we can do would be element of maximum shear. So we can go in here, element of maximum shear. So maximum shear will occur at the highest point, so that will be directly above and below the centre. This, this is my Tormax element there. So to find that, as before, we need to know the angle. So again, measure from x around here. So this again is from x, in this case anti-clockwise. And that must be, must add up to 90, so that will be 64 degrees. Close enough. 64 degrees. So, for, for my element, put in my X line in here. From my circle, I went anti-clockwise, 64 degrees. Take my line, go anti-clockwise, half of 64, so 32 degrees, 32 degrees, along that line I need to put that value of tensile stress, so I went from x to there, which is from x to there, along that line I need to put that value of tensile, which in this case is 20. So the coordinates for this point are 20, comma, and I need the height, which is 67. So this point here has a height of 67. So this is 2067. Okay, along this line is my 20. Draw my element. 20 megapascals. Now I need to do the shear. The shear for this point was positive 67 in here. So associated with that one would be this shear and it's positive 67. It needs to rotate my element clockwise. 
clockwise will be that way, so my arrow must go that way at 67. All the other shear arrows must do that. Okay. The other side, this side here, the normal stress on that one, I can get by doing the other side of the circle. This point here is 20 minus 67. Again, shear, normal stress, shear stress. My shear stress I've already got is minus 67. My tensile is 20, so that will be 20 megapascals there. And that's my maximum shear element. Okay, the next question might be to find the, or an element, so element at 50 degrees anti-clockwise from X. So I want to draw an element line in here. This is my X. I want to go around say 50 degrees about here. I want an element here. 50 degrees anti-clockwise from X. So on my circle I will need to go round anti-clockwise from X twice that angle. So I need to come around 100 degrees. From there to 100 degrees. Put a line right through the circle. And get the coordinates of these points. This point there has coordinates. So this one here is 20 and 55. So this point here is 20, 55. Normal stress, shear stress. And the other end of the line over here will be horizontally 60. So its point here is 60. Coordinates will be 60, comma, minus 55. Same height as the other one. Okay. First point. From here. I want to go from the X point around 50 degrees anti-clockwise. So from X around 100 degrees. So I'm going from there to there. Tenths, sorry. It's compressive of 20. It's minus 20. Compressive of 20. So from there to there means that I will have a compressive of 20 on that axis. Next thing is the shear. So this one will have a shear on this axis. For this point here, we said on our circle it is this point. So it has a negative 20 normal stress and a positive 55 shear. So on here, positive 55 shear means that it will spin my element clockwise, going around that way, so my arrow must be that way, and it's 55 megapascals, therefore my other shear arrows will do that. And the stress at 90 degrees to this one, on the other axis going through there, will be the other side of the circle to where we were. So from here down to here, this point is plus 60.